What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Commander Deck Giveaway. We just finished up Earl the Mistwalker and today we're going to be doing Luris of the Dream Den. Probably one of my favorite Orzhov Commanders. Um, it's a hard tie for me between him and we've got Karlov of the Ghost Council which um, I'm not going to review all the cards that I think you should add into this deck later but I will say I think Karlov would be an amazing choice as a two drop to add in here. Um, just because. So, anyways, we're going to get right into it. Uh, Luris of the Dream Den, if you're not familiar, he is a three drop, one, a two, white or black. Uh, he's a companion, so he can be a chosen companion. You may cast it once from outside the game. He's going to be our commander, though, and each com each permanent card in your starting deck has converted mana cost two or less. So, yes, all permanents have two or less mana cost. He has lifelink. He's a three, two. And then during each of your turns, you can cast him one, cast a permanent spell from your graveyard with mana cost two or less. Absolutely crazy. Um, he gets so fun. There's a ton of different ways to play this. Uh, we went a little bit control, and I it looks like, and this is probably another way I would play it. Um, a lot of people play him for sacrificing creatures and then dealing damage when creatures die. So. <coughs> Before we get too far into it, um, I'm going to just review the lands here real quick and give you guys a point to if you end up winning this deck or if you build decks of your own. Um, so some tabletop discussion. I put two snow-covered uh, lands in here. When you're playing, if you have cards that designate snow-covered lands and you don't have enough snow-covered lands to go in the deck, I do have enough. I just honestly, I felt like putting in a bunch of different different lands for the deck so that you guys could have different arts, things like that. Um, but just some tabletop discussion. Be like at the beginning, be like, hey guys, I have a creature card or something in here that's going to depend on snow basics. Um, if I put all of them in there, the great. If not, I have one of each just so you guys know, but all my basics are going to be snow. Make sure your table's cool with it. If they really, you know, gripe about it, honestly, find a new table. Um, anyways, so that's pretty much it on the lands. Um, I mean, some of these lands absolutely gorgeous, but we'll go right to the back to some of the some of the utilities. So roadside reliquary, we're gonna get to draw a card. Uh, we can replay that tons of times. Uh, Cave of the False Dragon, just put it in here for some reason. We end up, you know, really, really, really needing a creature. Same thing with Mistress Factory. <laughs> All right, so Field of Ruin. Um, what else did I, I put? Demolition Field, Field of Ruin. I think I have the other one too. There should be one more. Oh, where are you at? No, is it just the two? I thought I had all, I thought I had all three in here. Anyways, um, some non-basic land destruction and yeah, cause we're, we're cruel. Um, but we, we're going to sacrifice, got dross pits and if we need to draw cards for any reasons. And, uh, remember lands are permanent, so you can replay those. Love these lands. The um, you can go look for a swamp or a plane, planes card. So if you have Loris out, you immediately you go fetch one. Then you can replay this. So you're gonna get two land drops. Um, oh well, no, you're you'll just be able to do it your next turn. So you get one land drop, but you'll get two land ETPs. We don't have any land ETP in here. Uh, and it's running 35 lands, um, and then we do have some mana rocks in here for some simple reasons only um nothing like uh, we're, we're trying to be super op competitive um just some additional artifact sacrificing options so let's get right into it guys universal solvent one drop um this is just gross this is for late game you're gonna seven tap it and destroy target permanent honestly if i was really cruel um i would just target lands but um, which is probably eventually going to end up being what you're going to do. And you're going to be like, hey guys, at this point I'm just targeting your lands. Um, does everybody want to scoop and move on to the next game? Diabolic Tutor, tutor. Really, we're just going to look for whatever we might need. There aren't a whole lot of high casting cost cards in here. Um, I think there's like maybe two as far as sorceries and instance goes. So uh, just remember you don't have to stick to that rule for the sorceries and instance. I kind of did though. I really like the theme of just playing um, a lot of low casting, two drop, one drop, three drop, um, 
for the instance and sorcery so keeps that curve real low you can end up making a really fast deck also turn it into something where like you just constantly draw i will say the deck's probably missing some of those big infinite combo pieces but meh not a big deal it's not you can add them in if you want to um not like it's going to make or break the deck but diabolic tutor i would save this honestly honestly if you're in a pinch to go find something that's really going to like get you out of it and put you back in a safe place or to just go find something to finish the game blood artist pretty standard for this deck um there's a number of creatures that do this alas is another one um pretty popular commander actually but whenever another creature dies target player loses one life and you gain one life creatures are going to be dying a lot in this deck okay so this is a little bit more around the theme that i built was a lot of discard so we're going to make our opponents discard cards um eventually the goal is to get them down to they are top decking for the whole game so it's not going to be fun it's very cruel but when he enters the battlefield you're going to discard a card nizumi informant don't worry, we're going to sacrifice him anyways, and then we're going to replay him. We do the same thing, we have a few of those. Uh, Rogue's Gloves, deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Super important um, with some of the mill that's in here. You want to make sure that you have that option to draw a card. You may get down to the end and be like, holy crap, I just drew my entire deck. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of those are optional, and you don't always have to go dig from your graveyard so that you are getting a creature that will draw you a card see if I can get this camera to focus just a little better yeah yeah oh there we go much better so we'll pull Loris off to the side so it's uh, a little better for you guys oh yeah you guys can look at the card and read it all right cleric class great card here if you gain life here you get life plus one instead and then you can level it up we don't really care about leveling to three we only want to level to two when you gain life you're going to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control lotus has life link so you should be hitting that every turn corrupted convention so that being said guys you can just finish this game off of um commander damage which is not that hard to do um all right corrupted conviction you're going to sacrifice a creature draw two cards fantastic way for card draw and to get some of those creatures into your graveyard this copa gill mage whenever you gain life this turn each opponent loses that much life i mean luris can get pretty big you can dish out a ton of damage even if it's just going to smack a creature as long as you gain life um he's he's going to do a lot of damage and it's to each opponent so that's nuts super good card high synergy there all right open the armory you're going to look for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So let's go dig, find our, let's go fetch something. Um, not so much dig, but we're going to go fetch something from our um, library, put it in a hand, probably one of those pieces that's going to help us wrap up the game. Mind Leech Ghoul. This thing is disgusting. Um, I can't even believe that I didn't see it on the list of cards like for Loris. So he's a 2-2 two -two for 2 zombie creature and he has exploits so you may sacrifice a creature as it enters the battlefield that does include himself so he basically can recur himself because he's going to go right to that graveyard um, and when he does you're going to exile a card from each opponent's hand dumb absolutely dumb so just getting rid of people's hands um, in this deck this is the only thing that pertains to snow so you're going to sacrifice him tap sack priest of the haunted edge and target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn where x is the number of snow lands you control and you can only activate any time as a sorcery so um, that is why it's important to kind of note that to your play group if you are if you don't want to go ahead and swap out to all snow lands just be like look guys i have two snow lands in here here's proof there's snow and the rest of all my basics are going to be snow too um I like minus X minus X. The only reason I put that in there is that we can keep doing it. Um, that's pretty sick. So you have removal. Anything that has indestructible, it won't matter. Uh, as long as it doesn't have hex proof, you know, and we can target it, it's going to save us. So recurring creature destruction. Fantastic choice for the deck. All right, Mask of Memory. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw two cards if you do discard a card. I mean, we're gonna we're playing from our graveyard, so throw a permanent into your graveyard. Fantastic. 
You can replay it next turn if you really need it, but it's going to give us two cards off the top. Reckoner's Bargain, you're going to sacrifice an artifact or a creature. So one of the only reasons I actually put rocks into this deck was that we can just sacrifice away some of our mana rocks if we need to, if we want to save some of our other artifacts. There is a, we're going to make some token artifacts, um, so you can also do that. We're going to make some treasures, but I mean, ultimately we could do this really early on if we're trying to get some huge advantage. So, you know, turn one, you might drop a soul ring, um, and then turn two, you get your second land and a soul ring. You, you throw that soul ring away and then just ramp right up, um, get a bunch of more cards into your hand, and you have early draw. So huge, huge, huge way to get ahead. Probably one of the most busted cards. Oh my goodness. So this this was in standard at the same time, I believe, and there it was comboed a ton. Um, basically, what people would do, they just get Luris out, and every single turn, you're just going to sacrifice Elsid. So lifelink one, sacrifice it, and target creature and enchantment you control gains protection from the color of your choice. So even if something you have doesn't have hexproof, you can go ahead, sack this thing, give it protection, it can't get targeted. You can do it while it's on the stack, so you can do it in response, so you don't have to do it. Um, you can use this as a way to get past blockers of a specific color, so you basically make things unblockable. Absolutely stupid. I mean, you can even do it twice in a turn. Right? So if it's already on the field, you haven't used it yet, you can sack it. Let's say you're playing multicolor people. I, there's just so many things you can do. It's dumb. Got our beautiful soul ring. Arcane Signet. Karametra's Blessing. So plus two, plus two, enchanted creature, um, or enchantment creature, gains hex proof and indestructible. There are not a whole lot of things in here that give indestructible. Uh, really, we're just, if we're in a pinch and need a board wipe, there are not many single target protections in here um, as far as spells. Devil Blessing, same thing, we're going to give pro to a creature of a chosen color so we can make basically something unblockable depending on the colors we're playing. Um, manifold Key, uh, really we're just worried, we're only in this deck for target creature can't be blocked this turn. Three and a tap can't be blocked. Fantastic. Especially if we get Luris large enough. Um, I mean, he becomes commander lethal. It's just going to be dumb. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one, plus one counter on a quick creature if it is white. Ring of Thune. And then our creature is going to have vigilance, and it's an equip one cost. There is a whole series of rings from M13. Check them out. They all have their similar ability, um, and then they're going to give different bonuses like vigilance, flying, yada, yada. They're pretty cool. I like them. Always a big fan of the rings. I don't know why I don't see people play with them more often. Probably they just don't know that they exist. It's a little far back. What is that? It's M13, so is it like 2012? It's, wow. That's 12 years ago. That's crazy. All right, gold main pick. Crypt creature gets plus one, plus one. It's going to create some treasure tokens. So we get some mana ramp there. We also have additional artifacts that we can sacrifice, aka when we're using the bargaining ability. Thought Vessel, I, our hand's going to get pretty big. I'm just, just saying. Swiftfoot Boots, of course. Hexproof and haste. Some hasty. Really, we're more, more so we want that hexproof. Make sure we protect our commander. Virus Beetle. So enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Is that our third, our fourth creature that makes our opponents discard a card? Mm. Dockside Chef, pay two, uh, one in a black. You're going to sacrifice an artifact creature, draw a card. It's a sacrifice outlet. It also gives you the added bonus of drawing a card. Um, and it's also able to target an artifact instead of just a creature. It's actually really nice because there are some artifacts that you may want to um, destroy that you can then replay. All right, Feast of the Victorious Dead. At the beginning of your end step, if one or more creatures died this turn, you gain that much life. Fantastic. And then you need to put that many plus one, plus one counters among creatures you control. This synergy is just outrageous. Dispeller's cast Capsule. There is a better card. I just couldn't find it, um, but you're, it, it'll do fine just for you. Um, 
we should have tons of mana, especially if you're play, replaying those sacrifice lands early on in the game, you should be able to get as much mana out of your deck as quickly as possible for everybody else. So, um, I mean, absolutely fantastic way to, way to get some nice card advantage out of your deck. But anyways, the three in the tap, sacrifice it, you're gonna destroy target artifact or enchantment. It is recurring. Good old spirited companion. Enters the battlefield, draw a card. Michiko's Reign of Truth. People are probably like, oh my gosh. I love this card. Um, you're going to get plus one, plus one for artifact and enchantment. We have plenty of artifacts, plenty of enchantments in this deck to get a nice bonus out of this. So the even better part is, is that when you flip it, all right, it turns into a creature. We can just sacrifice that creature. And we can replay the friggin' saga. Which means we're gonna go through that whole cycle of just pumping up something for plus one plus one equal to enchantment and artifact. Come on, camera. Oh man. Does it not like the foiling? I don't think it likes the foiling. There we go. Alright, Zephyr Boots. Quick creature has flying, and then when a creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, discard a card. Again, we're not really too worried about ourselves drawing a card and discarding a card. If anything, this gives us more options. Um, so it's basically almost like drawing two. Elvish Doomsayer. When he dies, each opponent discards a card. Unfortunately, it's not when he enters the battlefield, but I mean, he we're just going to sacrifice him anyways. Let me do as much as we want. Disenchant, some spot removal. Used for in a pinch, right? Goblin Firebomb. Just just because, why not? Similar to Universal Solvent, um, it's probably gonna be mid game, late game. Maybe you just start destroying whatever permanence you want on the battlefield. If it's a land, it's a land. I think at that point if you get to the if you get to where you're to the game stalled out and nobody's really attacking or defending and things like that or they're defending and there's nothing really going on. I'm just freaking start targeting lands. I'm be like, all right, guys, it's time to move on. I'm just gonna start destroying all your lands, and then exile them from their graveyard. <laughs> all right, Thran Vigil. Whenever one or more artifact and/or creature cards leave your graveyard during your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. So you pretty much should be doing this every turn. So you're just gonna keep pumping up Loris. Honestly, as long as he has hexproof, I wouldn't be too worried. You're gonna get a ton of life back. That was the only thing I was actually thinking about was I think there is a one drop that lets you pay life. I cannot remember what it's called. I think it's from Ixalan or something like that. Um, and then it transforms as well. I gotta look it up. I might add it into the description if I can remember. If anybody knows the card I'm talking about, it could not even be a one drop, but I thought it was a one drop. Anyways, Bladed Battle Fan. All right, so for flash, and then when it enters the battlefield, attach the target creature you control. That creature gains indestructible until end of turn. It's just an indestructible protection, honestly. Um, in case we do have that off scenario where there's a board wipe, Luris is our only thing, and he's got full att attachments, equipment, all kinds of stuff on him. Um, we're just gonna flash it in real quick and go ahead. Um, thinking back to it though, probably a better card to add than even that um and you can add in both is we could phase out so um you have haystack was a great one absolutely love haystack i play that in anything that has white and it's a two drop all right deadly dispute so sacrifice an artifact or creature draw two cards and we get to create a treasure token fantastic wins all around sigil of valor Quick creature attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other creature you control. So yeah, it's got attack alone, but I mean, that could put Luris in the position to become very lethal. Eaten alive, we're gonna sacrifice a creature, of course, and then we can exile Planeswalker or another creature. Great for getting rid of things that say they have indestructible. All right, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. This is Clarion Spirit. After turn three, I mean, you should be casting two, at least two spells every turn. I would be super shocked if you are not. 
Rate of Oblivion. All right, as additional cost cast a spell, sacrifice a non-land permanent, exile, exile target non-land permanent, and you can flashback it. So we have two exiles for anything that's truly pesky and we really don't want on the board. Dukuchi Silencer, he is a human ninja. When he deals combat damage to a player, you can discard a creature card. That works for me, don't really care. We're probably gonna we're gonna have the option to play it from the graveyard. And then you can use it as a recurring way to destroy target creature or planeswalker. So multiple times, that's great. We can replay it from the graveyard. Um, it has ninjutsu. It's such a good, such a good card for this deck. All right, village rights. We can sacrifice a creature and draw two cards. So more card advantage there. Elder Fang Disciple. You guys are like, how many cards do we have that we're gonna make people discard? Honestly, quite a few. And basically, what it's going to end up happening if you get to this point, and everybody's going to either have to play what they have in hand that they draw, and if they don't, and everybody has one card in their hand and it gets back to your turn, you're just going to make everybody discard it. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to, if it gets to that, it's going to generate a lot of heat. Scholar of New Horizons enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it And then you can remove a counter from a permanent you control and then you can go search for a planes put it into your hand and It's just a fantastic way to to thin your deck out from lands Absolutely perfect. Oh man one of my favorite cards in this deck And we got to get to refocus here. I shouldn't even have touched it camera got freaked out It was like oh, I love that card, too All right Quick Creature gets plus 2, plus 0, has Death Touch, you can pay 8, and then whenever Quick Creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. I mean, yeah. It's, why not? It's, <laughs> you might actually get to use that to win some games. Key to the City. Discard a card, up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. Easy. I mean push your commander through, especially if he's got 1-1 one -one counters on it, it's, it doesn't take long to kill somebody. And then, whenever it becomes untapped, you can pay 2 and draw a card. Key to winning the game, unblockable commanders. Triumphant Adventurer, it has Death Touch, and then as long as it's your turn, he has First Strike. So First Strike, Death Touch, he's a 1-1. One -one. I only put this in here because I really wanted to go into the dungeon. Literally the only reason. If you don't care about going into the dungeon, whatever. Go put something else in here. <laughs> I just wanted to go into the dungeon. That was it. There are some cool dungeon mechanics that I think will, you know, ramp this up. A lot of scries, create tokens, create artifacts, return cards to the battlefield, draw cards. I mean, there's so many dungeons and so many different ways you can play them. Um, this just off it offered it another avenue at avenue of utility All right lion sash One of my another like really good card kind of a, a favorite you're gonna exile a card from a graveyard If it was a permanent card you can put a plus one plus one counter on it and then a, a Creature equipped with this card is gonna get plus one plus one for each plus one on lion sash It wouldn't be a two drop permanent game if we didn't have mecha titan core it really wouldn't all right five exile it and four other artifact creatures and or vehicles you control create mecha titan uh create mecha titan a legendary 10 10 construct artifact creature token with flying vigilance trample lifelink and hey sets all colors i it's gonna be so hard to get this off it may not even be possible but because it's a two drop permanent, I just had to put it in there. And literally, if you don't if you don't care about the hilariousness of it, I would say that this is probably a card that can get upgraded. Um, but a 10 10 construct artifact with flying, vigilance, trample, lifelink, and haste. That's all colors. And then when it uh, leaves the battlefield, you return all those cards back to your hand. Uh, back to the battlefield. I just the, the humor, the absolute humor. People are going to be like, what is that doing in your deck, bro? All right, Bloodforge Battleaxe. 
Quick creature gets plus two plus zero. Oh. When it deals combat damage to a player, you're going to create a token that's a copy of Bloodforge Battleaxe. It's going to work great with your saga from earlier, Michiko. Um, you're going to create a ton of Bloodforge Battleaxes, and that's just going to increase the number of plus one plus one. So, Breach the Multiverse. Infamous, infamous card. We're gonna exile, or we're gonna mill ten cards. It does here. This is a lar I think it's the second largest, technically. Um, no, it it, I, it should be the largest. It's a seven drop sorcery. Mill ten cards, and each player, and then you're gonna choose a creature or planeswalker card in that player's graveyard. So if you're playing with four players, that's including yourself, you're gonna get to do this four times, and you're gonna put them onto the battlefield under your control. And all your creatures become Phyrexian. The everything you put on the battlefield becomes a Phyrexian that you put up. So, I mean, if you if you get this card off and you have decent control of the board, this is probably the point where people are going to decide the game's over. Um, just throw and throw, depending on what you end up pulling out of their graveyards, and you could even end up pulling something that's just going to finish the game. A arrow's oath sworn. So whenever it deals combat damage to a player, if it has fewer than four plus one plus one counters on it, you're gonna put a plus one plus one counter on it. It has menace, starts out as a two two, and then when you have exactly four counters on it, you're gonna search your library for a card and put it into your hand. So you can just it's gonna be a nice fetch, you can go search for it. Um even funnier, there is a card that lets you remove plus one plus one counters. So you could essentially just keep doing this. Right? That's exactly four what's one counters yeah so just remove one from four drop it down to three and then pop it back up to four so you have a fetch that you can just keep doing as long as they don't block it all right so we have both marches march of otherworldly light march of wretched snow i mean good spot removal so target creature or planeswalker and then we have um uh, what is that one going to be? Artifact Creature or Enchantment. So X or less, and you should be able to ramp into something good. X is probably, I mean, I can't see why X would ever be anything larger than like 9 or 10, which is ridiculous, but um, probably like average. You're probably like 5 or 6, but if you have a ton of mana and you just want to use it to gain life or something like that, um, you have the option to. Mokutai Soul Ripper, another vehicle. So... When it attacks, you can sacrifice another artifact or creature, so great sacrifice engine, and it's going to get a plus one, plus one, and it's going to gain menace. So just another little sacrifice engine. Unlicensed Hearse. So we're going to be putting a lot of things into people's graveyards. We're going to exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard, and then its toughness is, power and toughness are equal to the number of cards exiled with it. I mean, fantastic. We're just going to, if anybody's playing Recursion, since we do have a lot of discard and a lot of mill, we're going to keep those things out of their graveyard. Um, and we can also target in response to, so if they try to target something in their graveyard or even in our graveyard, and we're like, ooh, I really don't want them to have that, well, we can go ahead and make sure that they don't. Looks yours, Giada's Gift. So Quick Creature gets plus one, plus one for each counter on it. That's absolutely stupid because we're basically going to double the number of plus one, plus one counters on anything that this gets attached to. Ridiculous. All right, two board wipes in the deck, Wrath of Skies and Depopulate. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, have the if you have the option to put board wipes into your deck, I recommend at least two when you're playing Commander. Um, again, you are playing 100 card decks, so you may not even see them in an entire game. We are playing a lot of draw though for this deck, so there should be, you should actually, you should get through your whole deck. Or you, you could easily get through your whole deck in one game, every time. So, Horn of Valhalla, two drop. Um, it also has Yigurt's Call, so you can X into white to create however many soldier creature tokens that you would like. Um, and then a quick creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. We're probably going to end up using that on our commander if we've been saving up treasure tokens or anything like that. Um, or the game's a little late, we can just drop this for a massive amount of tokens, um, then just swipe away with one creature. Terrestrial's Devastation. So same thing here. You lose X life and create X tap Power Stone tokens. So we're going to create a ton, ton of tokens um, that are artifacts that are going to impact that Michka's 
the saga from earlier that gives plus one plus one for artifacts and enchantments on the board so it's also a third board wipe technically um, where X they're gonna get minus mi minus one minus one for each artifact you control there are a lot of artifacts in this deck so you could potentially wipe the board um, and still keep your own creatures up or at least the important ones based off of how much that X factor ends up being black blade black blade whoa black blade reforged man stumble in so plus one plus one for each land you control I, I hope we get all 35 lands on a battlefield in one game because that would be sick um, if you do fantastic because it's gonna get plus 35 plus 35 minus like three because I think two of the two of them two or three of the lands you have to sacrifice when they enter the battlefield so plus 33 plus 33 that's a lot of damage yep 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 it is and probably my favorite card in this deck and this is why sacrificing artifacts is important um mesmeric orb whenever a permanent becomes untapped that permanent controller mills a card so the nasty thing about this card is when you get to a certain point in the game if you've you know if the deck has the control of the game um and you've made people discard in their top decking and they have to play their cards or else you're going to make them discard it every single turn that means they are not only going to have to play the card but they're going to then have to tap mana and when it comes back around to the turn they're going to mill cards because they either mill themselves out or don't play anything so it's a pretty cruel cruel uh way to build this deck in my opinion but when it comes to your turn at the beginning of somebody's instep before it gets to you you know what you can do instead of um untapping you can go ahead and sacrifice this away put it into your graveyard so it's not on the field anymore and if you just want to keep playing this way you can just replay it with loris so yeah well guys that's the deck um this is a little more along my line along the lines of like what i like to play um yeah just ideas that make people not want to play magic with you usually <laughs> oh and the, the crazy part is is I, there's a ton of like key things that aren't even in this deck like easy combo pieces that just downright win the game um Luris does have some really strong pieces I, I like him as a commander it's just he can run away 100 percent um and very early on too so he's a three drop you can get about on turn two no problem but if you guys uh don't mind make sure you comment down below and i will give this deck away probably about a week's time congrats to uh i think joe star won the miss walker earl the miss walker so congrats joe and then for everybody else subscribe to the channel uh if you like the content and then also comment down below if you would be interested in playing this deck for free and then you can let me know how much everybody hates you at the table. All right, guys, until next time. Can't wait to do another one.